friends, it's Sarah, and today I'm going to be recapping my 2023 reading year. So this year I read 193 books out of my goal of 180 with a total of 63,125 pages. The shortest book I read was a Plants vs. Zombies book uh, that I read for Readathon which was only 28 pages long, but the longest book that I read was just for me and it was A Day of Fallen Night by Samantha Shannon at 868 pages long. So a pretty big difference of 840 pages. Um, my average book length was around 327 pages and my average rating was 3.8 stars. This year um, I also found this Spotify rap style summary from a website called myyearinbooks.com. It's not completely up to date, it's missing my last three books, but it says I read 102,253 minutes, which is an interesting way to summarize it considering these weren't all audiobooks. But anyways, my top genres according to it were romance with 88 books, contemporary with 68 books, and fantasy with 49 books. My top author was Neil Schusterman because I read four of his books, which was the entirety of the Ark of a Scythe series, and my reading vibe was adventurous. So if you're interested in that, you can take a look at it as well. Uh, you just put like your Goodreads link in there and it spits out this cute little graphic and it's like super fun. So usually in my reading journal I use a little bracket to keep track of my favorite and least favorite books of each month and then pit them against each other March Madness style to find the winner or loser of the year. And while I do enjoy this bracket it doesn't really capture some of the books that I truly loved or loathed. There are some months where I read a ton of really great or really terrible books and I have to choose the best or worst of them and other months where most of my reads are kind of mid and it's not really fair to pit those just kind of mid books against the ones that were terrible but not quite as terrible as my champion of that month. So I'm deciding to do this wrap up in a different style this year. I'll still put up my brackets on the screen so you can pause and take a look at the book battle if you want. But I went through my Goodreads again and added to my list any books that stood out to me but didn't necessarily make it onto the bracket due to other books being better or worse that month. Uh, and then I whittled it all down to my top 10 and my bottom 10 and I'm also including my DNFs in this video as well. So I'm going to start with my worst books, talk about my DNFs, and then finish up with the best books of the year. I should also say these aren't quite in any sort of order but I did try and put my most extreme ends uh, at the end of each list. So like my worst book will be at the end of my worst books list and my best book will be at the end of my best books list. But within there they're kind of just all over the place. First of all, the worst books of the year. So I got really really lucky this year and I didn't read a ton of books that I really hated. So about half of this list is books that were just kind of mid for me. They just didn't quite hit the way I wanted them to but they weren't terrible. Uh, first up we have Flower Heart by Catherine Bakewell. So this was a three star read. It was just like very mid. The definition of mid despite the stakes being very high it was a cozy fantasy and those cozy fantasy vibes made it really hard to feel tense or like the stakes were actually as in, uh, intense as they were. The second book I have is All the Feels by Olivia Dade. This I got in a little free library uh, and then promptly got rid of it in a little free library as well. I would say this was also three stars but like the main dude kept insulting the main girl for the first chunk of the book and the chemistry just wasn't there for me. It just wasn't my kind of thing at all. Third up I have Thank You for Listening by Julia Whelan, another three star read. Um, if I remember this one correctly there was way too much banter that I just didn't enjoy and I think it was probably better as an audiobook since the author is a well-known audiobook narrator. I think it was designed to be read as an audiobook and that might have been better but as a physical book there was just too much of them just bat, 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 bat at each other with all this banter and it did not work for me. So next up is First Comes Like by Alicia Ray. This was 2.5 stars unfortunately. It was a really cute premise but I found it lacking in chemistry again. All the decisions feel emotionless and yet also void of logic somehow. The characters basically didn't talk about anything deep or important and I hated, hated, hated the miscommunication at the 95% mark. It was really stupid and it just did not fit where it went. Um, and the one explicit scene at the end was not great and felt totally at odds with how tame the rest of the book was. It was very chaste until the one sex scene at the end which was just like also not well done. Uh, midway through the list we have Masters of Death by Olive Blake. 
This was another 2.5 stars. It was not at all what was on the synopsis. I think I've talked about this before in another video, but I thought it was going to be kind of like a funny romp and it wasn't. And there's a lot of talking around the point. So just a lot of like, bah, 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 again, where they're kind of like going around something, but it's all really vague and like, what does anyone mean? I don't know. So I found that incredibly frustrating and it was just not at all what I expected based on the synopsis. Up next was a horrifying disappointment for me, and that was Girls Like Girls by Hailey Kyoko, another 2.5 stars. I love Hailey Kyoko, that's probably why I got such a generous rating, but the main characters in this were very hard to sympathize with, there was no chemistry, they treated each other not well, they treated other people not well, and I get that they're teens, but they just didn't feel fleshed out enough that I could forgive some of the things they were doing to each other. And that's really sad because I love Hailey Kyoko's music, I love this music video, and just like the whole, the whole package of this book was incredible, but it just, it just didn't hit. It just wasn't great. And I kind of knew it maybe wasn't going to be great because it's a celebrity writing a book. And it just, it just didn't work out for me, unfortunately. So then we have A Taste of Sage by Yafa S. Santos. This was a two star read. There's no real intimacy between the characters in this book. The guy proposes after a few weeks of dating and then they break up. Uh, for the second time in the story. She retreats to her parents' house and then back to New York City in the span of a chapter. It was just like really fast paced and weird. The recipes were really good, but that's just everything else was weird. The pace of this book was really weird. The one main character gets hired and then is left alone in the kitchen to cook on his first day. Like what kind of fancy restaurant would just leave a new chef alone in the kitchen to cook the recipes that he doesn't know. It was mind boggling to me and very disappointing. Then we have Meet Me at the Lake by Carly Fortune, another two stars, another incredible disappointment because I loved her first book so much. Uh, my Goodreads review sums it up. I said, no chemistry between the main characters. There were three or four different mysteries that had little development throughout the book and then all just resolved at the same time. Uh, and Will just doesn't communicate at all. What does he even bring to the relationship? Also, at one point, Fern says she can reach her arms out and touch her bed with one and her counter with the other, but can still fit a table and chairs in that space. And I have to imagine she has the world's skinniest table because how would you fit between the table and the bed or the bed and the or the table and the counter? Like what kind of what kind of like one foot thick table do you have that you can fit on either side? Like, girl, your arm is like two and a half feet long. What is happening? which is a dumb thing to nitpick, but it really bothered me and I couldn't stop thinking about it while reading this book. The second last is Unlock Your Storybook Heart by Amanda Lovelace. This was one star. It's a collection of poetry. The poems were not great. It felt like an Instagram self-help graphics printed into a book. Uh, it also had six full color identical illustrations. And for what? Like, why were they all the same? There was, I thought there was going to be a progression within this illustration. Like maybe the seasons are changing. Maybe things are being added or taken out. No, it was the identical image printed six different times in this book. And I just was like, why did you waste all this color ink on this? They were full color. Like, what is happening? It just blew my mind. Then the last book, my worst book of the year, was Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros, uh, which I still gave two stars. And I have a whole video about why I didn't enjoy it. So you can watch that if you want the whole rant, but I don't think this book is worth it. I think whatever you want out of this book, there's another book that does it better. And there are probably several books that do all of them better together. So just go find one of those. It, it was real rough y'all. It, oof, TikTok did me really dirty on that one. So that's all my bottom 10 books of the year, the ones I just had a rough time with. And then we're going to go on now to my DNFs. So I only DNF'd eight books this year, which is not too bad. Um, I am trying to get better at being like, I don't think this is for me. So I'm just gonna move on with my life and not let it uh, ruin my life <laughs> like those previous books kind of did. So these are just organized chronologically from when I was trying to read them and then stopped reading them. Um, but first up is A Thorn in the Saddle by Rebecca Weatherspoon. I stopped reading this on page 11 out of 328. The love interest goes into a rage and like rips his grandma's boyfriend off of her. 
and I just couldn't do it. I hate angry male protagonists and it just felt really old fashioned. I think it is a bit of an older romance. So that's probably why, but I just, I couldn't do it. I'm like, if this man is gonna be like super angry and like the weird protective, I can't get into that. I hate that in a love interest. So I just, I just stopped right there. Uh, then I tried to read A Dash of Salt and Pepper by Kosuko Jackson. I stopped at page 142 out of 356. I didn't like the age gap between the protagonists. That's not my favorite trope anyways. And it just, the young guy in this really acted like a teenager. There was also way too many pop culture references. They were like on every other page or like every page, it was too much. Um, and I think this is something that I did enjoy when I was younger, but I just, I don't like the pop culture references anymore. One or two is fine, too many, and it just immediately dates your book. I'm not quite sure why I don't like it, but I just don't. Then I was trying to read How to Find a Princess by Alyssa Cole, but I stopped on page 92 out of 367. I found Bez to be weirdly chipper for a trained spy slash bounty hunter, and I would say this feels more like a Princess Diaries than an Anastasia retelling, which is what I was really after, the Anastasia retelling. Not that I don't like the Princess Diaries, but it just, that wasn't what I wanted. And I, there was like too much banter in this for a supposed, again, spy or bounty hunter, like, why are you bantering this whole time? Then I was trying to read Belittled Women by Amanda Sellett and I stopped that on page 102 out of 375. This is a Little Women retelling in modern day. <laughs> the part that I read was just Joe and Amy bickering and I wanted more of an actual retelling whereas I think this kind of felt more like they had taken the characters and then done something else with them and I wanted a like modern interpretation of the book. So I just, I gave up on that one. Then uh, this one is the one I'm saddest about. Uh, this is They Call Me George by Cecil Foster. I stopped this one about a third of the way through and I found some of it really interesting but a lot of it was very academic and dry. So for example I learned that train car porters were paternalistically called George's boys or just George after George Pullman who popularized the type of service that they provided on the cars. So like very interesting stuff. I learned a lot of like interesting facts but it was just a little bit too much like reading a textbook for me to read the entire book unfortunately. Up next is one that I might return to at some point. This is The Reading List by Sarah Nisha Adams, and I stopped this on page 92 of 368. It was just too sad for me at the moment that I was reading it. It felt very hopeless, and I might try it another time, but I just couldn't handle sad old people when I was reading it, and I still kind of feel like that. I want a little bit more fluffy, and it was just like a really sad senior man going through it, and I was like, I. I just don't want this right now. Then I tried to read Venko by Sheree Dimaline and I stopped that on page 96 out of 400. I wasn't really enjoying the writing and I didn't care about any of the characters. I think that I just don't really enjoy this author's writing as much. I read The Marrow Thieves by her and I found it like medium. It was okay, it wasn't terrible, it wasn't great for me, but I think I just don't mesh with this author's writing style so maybe I should just stop trying to read her books. And finally, the eighth book that I DNF'd was Dead Collections by Isaac Fellman. I saw this on page 96 of 239. It was very insta-lovey, it was very weird, which I expected, but then it was like all vibes, no plot. And I really picked this one up because I liked the cover a lot and I think it was done by the same cover artist who did another book that I enjoyed. So I was like, maybe this will be, I don't know, similar vibes. And it just, it was just too weird. And just like the main character was like immediately boning and I was like, who are either of you? What is going on? This isn't like a romance. What is happening? So it, yeah, just didn't do it for me and was a little bit like a, a reminder not to judge a book by its cover. My bad. Okay, moving on now to my best books of the year. Um, I read a ton of books I really loved. I had a great reading year and I found it hard to narrow down my list. But here we are, this is what I have come up with. So first up, I have Painted Devils by Margaret Owen. This is the sequel to Little Thieves, and it's an incredible sequel. I love these traumatized babies so much, and it left off on this incredible cliffhanger, and I can't wait for 2025 when Holy Terrors comes out. Margaret Owen, you're a genius. Then I have All My Rage by Saba Tahir. This was five stars. It made me almost cry in public. It's very emotional kind of intergenerational journey with two different timelines, stories about immigration and poverty, and racism, and I loved it. It was her first uh, contemporary book and I just can't wait to see what else she writes. I hope she continues writing in that genre because I really loved it. Then I have Starling House by Alex E. Harrow. Two more very traumatized babies that I loved. Uh, the writing was beautiful and I I've really enjoyed everything I've read by Alex E. Harrow and I am going to keep reading her stuff because her writing is so lyrical, it's so beautiful, 
and the themes that she puts in her books. Ugh, chef's kiss. I love this so much. Up next, I have The Sleeping Car Porter by Suzette Mayer. This was also great writing, but in a very different way. It was, I would say, very effective writing because it follows a car porter who is incredibly sleep deprived, as they often were, and it made me feel like really tired and almost anxious reading it. Um, this is also a local author. She's from Calgary, where I'm from, which is like really fun and great, but I just, I just really loved it. The whole time I was reading it, I was really worried about the main character. I was really worried about poor Baxter, and I was like, please make it through the end of this okay. But this was incredible and I think would also be like a really good book club book. I think there's a lot to discuss in here, lots of like imagery and metaphor and everything, so. Up next I have Dream Wheels by Richard Wagamese. Five stars. Ugh, I love everything that this man wrote. Um, but this is about a bull rider whose career is derailed due to injury and a young man who is freshly out of juvie and they have to heal from their respective traumas. And they do this on a ranch together. The writing is incredibly moving. There's beautiful themes around healing and community and all these characters that you just love instantly. I'll read everything he has written because so far it's all been excellent. Up next is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. This is 4.5 stars. It's a super sweet cozy fantasy with just a touch of romance. Um, an excellent main character who is super grumpy and begrudgingly joins a community and I can't wait for the second one to come out. I mentioned that in my previous video where I talked about my most anticipated 2024 releases, but this was just so endearing and so sweet and just the most beautiful, cozy, little, little snuggle of a book. Another book that I've talked about a few times in other videos is Becoming a Matriarch by Helen Knott. Five stars immediately. It's an amazing memoir about grief, family, and figuring out your place uh, within your community and culture, and I just love her writing again. It's very beautiful, and she just speaks with such vulnerable intimacy, and you can't help but just feel for her the whole time. Then I have one of the last books I read this year actually was What My Bones Know by Stephanie Fu, another five stars, a beautiful memoir about the author dealing with complex PTSD. I could not believe the amount of abuse she endured. I was amazed that she's still standing today. I really enjoyed reading about her treatment journey and the different things that she's tried and it was just a really beautiful look into mental health and treatments of mental health. It reminded me a little bit of like Know My Name by Chanel Miller, that kind of like beautiful memoir. So highly recommend. Next up is Mouse by Art Spiegelman. I've talked about this one before as well, but this is another five stars. Another incredible true story, this one about surviving the Holocaust and the intergenerational trauma it wrought, told in a graphic novel using um, animals as parables. Absolutely fantastic, horrifying, and will stay with you, I think, for the rest of your life once you read it. My last book of the year is Happy Place by Emily Henry, because of course I always love Emily Henry's books, um, and this one I really related to the fear of losing the friends as your life paths diverge. I feel like I'm kind of in that moment right now where a lot of my friends' lives are going off in different directions and it's a lot harder to find times to come together and meet up and chat and hang out. So I really relate to the characters in this. And then again, another wonderful romance that I absolutely loved. And I think this is the main character that I have related to the most with her people-pleasing tendencies. Those are the 28 books that were the worst, unfinished, and best of the year. Let me know if you've read any of them or what your best and or worst book of the year was down in the comments. I had a really great reading year last year and I hope that 2024 brings me a lot more of those excellent reads and fewer of the bad reads. I think this year we're letting go, we're trying to let go of the TikTok FOMO because it has almost always done me dirty. In fact, the only book that I have picked up because I saw it on TikTok and enjoyed was Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. All the other ones that I've picked up because I've seen them on TikTok have been some of my least favorite books ever, but we're letting go of that. Here's hoping for another excellent reading year in 2024. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I hope to see you next time. Now go read a book. I think me and this author just don't get along. That's not the right word to say. Why is it hard to read Catherine? Make it, made it feel a really, uh, so this is the reading list by Sarah, by Sarah Nisha. I, oh my God.